would suggest the first place to begin is not in randomly throwing out things and then expending energy, but to actually sit down, analyze the data, analyze where we are, understand where we've come from, and then to begin the process of proposing solutions <coughs> to well-diagnosed problems. Because sometimes you can prescribe a medicine that does more harm than the ailment. I'm going to have to cut you off. I'm going to have to jump in on you. Thank you for that. Oh. And the reason I am is because, Brother Jonathan, I want to respond to you. You missed the beginning of the meeting, and that was the, the prescription that was laid out. Just so you know, we're on the same page, but you missed that. So I just want to let you know that the people were invited Sorry, out to Sorry, my phone shut down even though I was plugged into my power pack. I just uh, changed my batteries. It was also getting hot, so. Are. I need to hear from the people but I'm back now. of what they're experiencing. And the sister brought out something that we hadn't even put on the agenda, which was what the women were going through and what they were experiencing and the lack of follow through from the police. So, this is information gathering. This is a first step because we need to know that we're going to decide what we're going to focus on. And when I said put it in writing and then you said no and then you explained basically that a person needs to put it in writing, I was taught and trained by the Honorable Minister Louis Barakai. So that is exactly what the plan is, is to identify the problem, gather the information, and then if you bring a solution, you have to bring the actual solution, which means it has to be fleshed out. Everything that you're saying, you just we just we just got here, you missed the beginning, but that's what we're doing. So I'm I'm not I'm not I'm I'm defending that because you missed it. And I need you to know that that's what we're doing. Otherwise I we're wasting people's time. We want to say one and thing. my time too. So I'm just saying that that's the it may not be you walking in and you're looking at people just expressing themselves, but I wanted to give them that opportunity because through certain expressions I'm seeing one some possible solutions. They're not they didn't come equipped tonight because it's a town hall meeting. Now when we have our strategy meetings, then they're gonna come equipped with this is how I want to implement this and that. And then, and then we gather and we research, but this is how we're beginning, and this is not where we're ending. This is just identifying what the issues are in the community. I would have wanted more community out so we could figure out what some of the issues are because I'm not qualified to say what the sister is going through over here and over there and say that's the issue that Iowa Citizens for Justice should be looking at. I want to hear what they have to say so that then we can determine what we're going to address and what we're not going to address. One thing I want to add though, in addition to what he's saying is one thing we haven't done and why we're losing so much ground and is really one of the biggest reasons I'm here is because we don't understand the enemy we're fighting here. Yeah. That's what we need to do first. Understand who yes. it is we're fighting. I mean, it doesn't make sense to fight individual cops, obviously, right? It, it's, yeah. In terms of a whole. Yeah. As a whole. Absolutely, for your self-righteousness, absolutely. But as a whole, we have to understand what we're really fighting here. We're not fighting individual cops. We're not fighting individual politicians. And when we understand the true enemy that we're going against, then we can implement solutions on how to attack this enemy. But until that happens, we're going to keep losing ground. Things aren't going to get done. We're going to get into meetings that go nowhere or whatever happens. So I would say we take a step back even further than defining the problems we want solved. Let's try to come to an agreement on what is it that is the true enemy of what we're going after here. Problems, the, enemy. the enemy could be lack of training, the enemy could be the cops themselves, the enemy could be the system. I would like to hear your thoughts yeah. on um, what... Well, in, in my opinion, every, the same people that control one piece of the problem control the other piece of the problem. And so, so until we understand the, that... What is the enemy? I'm asking Well, it's kind of a cliche answer. It literally is cliche. Obviously, it's a system, right? Well, what does that really mean, right? Well, the same people that run the court systems and the police departments are the same people the that education run system. the politicians, run the politics. These are all the same hundred people, right? Yes. So until we understand who these hundred people are, how do they, how do they infiltrate, right? How does their money get spent? We're never going to have, and that's why we're constantly getting circles running around us because we have no clue what they're doing. Have. I mean, why wouldn't you protect your interests if you have all this? Why wouldn't I protect? Why wouldn't you? 
Yeah, I just want to just add if I can to you know, this legislation. You know that you know individuals need to get involved with legislation. You know, uh, there are several bills that are going to be offered. You know that are going down. And the thing is, individuals need to be involved and understand their process. This is Representative you know, uh, Abdul Samad. Who is in the member of the Iowa House of Representatives? Probably not going anywhere if support isn't there. You know, and people know how to contact their legislators. You know, uh, one of the things when we talk about body cameras, we're talking about money calls. You know, I offered, I'm doing a bill to, you know, see that we put some money in to go along with federal money to get body cameras. But also, that I'm adding some other legislation because you had the uh, police chief in Nevada. We had an incident that happened and he refused to release mm -hmm. video on that. So we're crafting some legislation to say that, you know, that's why yeah. the kind of transparency has to be there. The other piece of legislation that's being offered is that whenever there's a police shooting and it goes to the grand jury, that automatically an independent prosecutor is appointed. Oh, that yeah. You know, that's that, piece of that would yeah. that, that would go there. so far. The other piece that we need to put money back into small businesses in the urban core, you know, because there's no businesses in the urban core. Uh, that's another piece of legislation. Yeah. And there's a couple other pieces I don't want, but I'm just saying when you do your list of yeah, put it on the list. Yeah, 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 these are things. But we, how do we support you in these bills? How do we well, the, that's what I'm saying. We need that uh, when you do your strategy, we need to have I, I have lobbied, so if you know how to lobby I can lobby yeah. Yeah, I can tell you how to do that. It's very simple to but, do that. But not, not me, but we need to have a legislative yeah. 101. Yes. Okay. You know, so yeah. folk understand the process. I mean, I know if I watch TV and it says, you know, how to become a bill, you know, there's right. more to it. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, it doesn't quite work that way anymore. So, you know, so we need to do that. Yeah, okay. I'm that. Okay. And okay. I'm willing okay. to do that, but I'm also willing to do that at the Capitol. You know, because folk need to come to the Capitol, yeah, folk that have been to the Capitol, the children that have been to the Capitol, you know, that type of thing. But I'm willing to yeah. do that at the Capitol, yeah, you that. know, so I'm going to invite the children from you know, the Capitol to come and, you know, you know, and, you know sit down, and we'll bring staff down even to talk about budgets, you know, because when you get in schools and everything else, Iowa is good for systemically enslaving people, and I'm calling it enslavement yeah, for yeah. the simple fact. Yeah. I should not be getting going to jail because I can't afford to pay a ticket that's a, a minor driving infraction. There should be nobody in jail behind child support. The state has too many jobs out here that's unfilled and too much work that needs to be done that you can't take the skilled workers from that particular geographic and do something with them. You can pay them $15 on a temporary agency basis and seven of those dollars go to child support and the other $725, $758 goes to the person who's working because they still need to be able to make a living. They still need to be able to build a resume. You, our system has systematically made people unhirable. The arrest records. If I haven't been in trouble for 20 years, but I can guarantee you every time that I go, apply for a job that's actually going to make me some money, oh, that felony that I committed 20 years ago is there. Oh, that arrest that I had that was dismissed and thrown out is still there from 20 years ago. And so now you have a, a, work, a workforce that is being thrown under the bus yep. because there's arrests that they never were prosecuted on, They're, they haven't been in trouble for many, many years, so I'm also pushing for expungement of certain types of records. If you have nonviolent crimes on your, yeah. your background and you ain't Like my trespass when I protested. What is it? Whatever the limit is that they can ask you on a job application, if it's two years and you haven't been in trouble, then that needs to be expunged, deleted, and let somebody go There's a movement called Ban the Box. Have you heard of Ban the Box? I have Okay, so there, there is, there's things that we can 
Remember you said And we have legislation. We have legislation on Bad the Box. They passed it in Minnesota. We were actually in Alpha in the bill. On the back. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Folks need to understand oh, what we've been doing over the last two years. We're talking about that. So that's 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 Yes. Then the box refers to on an application form for a job. A job application may have any variation of uh, have you been convicted of a felony? Have you been uh, convicted of a misdemeanor? Have you been arrested? Anything like that. And it could be it could be like from 30 years ago. And it would still be on your record. It could be an arrest that uh, was not prosecuted, like some of my trespasses were not prosecuted. They were dropped, but they're still on my record. So that's what the ban the box is. Ban that check box on those forms. So you don't know. Once it's voted in law, the key is, and, and you know, and I don't want to get off from the list that you were doing. But the bottom line is, is that that's the problem. A lot of people don't understand the process because once a bill is in law, is in law. We got we got laws that don't make no sense. That's been there since 1900. Yeah. 1800s, even some. The point is, you know, we have to be under, understand the process and how we get a law passed. And that it takes people to support because you have uh, their very representative, their very who decided to get on the judicial committee this time, you know, so that we can start addressing some of the laws and stop others, you know, like to stand your own ground and other laws that individuals are going to be trying to push. You know, didn't you know. stop that from the stand your ground? Huh? The, when they first tried to press the stand your ground, like the law in Florida that got Trayvon Martin's killer exonerated, we. We stopped that one. Is there another no, one? No, it was passed. Yeah, it was passed. It was passed. It was stopped in the Senate. Right, okay. Yeah. Right. The it house. was passed here out of the House. And, it was and when Representative Winchero is going to present that bill again, which goes through the, uh, the uh, what's the what's the committee? I'm on the committee. But anyway, it goes to that committee, and it comes out unanimous. You know, and, and, you know, it's, and folks just got to know the process. We don't know the process. Mm -hmm. And that's why, and I also say that because, you know, usually at every meet, people criticize legislators, you know, about we didn't do it, they don't do that. And most of y'all don't know. You don't know the bills we're asking, pushing them, putting up. So that's why I want to do that yes. at the Capitol and as soon as you can do it. So can I say something? Um, uh, let's look at the Constitution for a minute. The 13th Amendment. We know what the 13th Amendment means, right? That's, that's, the, that's the amendment that made us all free. Except if you commit a crime. Yeah. Then you become a slave. Not an indentured, not then you don't become an indentured servant yeah. until your debt is paid. You see the specific language, the reason why they say certain things you become slave. So that gives the reason why your slave has no rights. Slave don't deserve a job. Slave doesn't do this. That's how they justify. So until we get to the root of the legislation, the root, the constitution. Until you get into that and say, you know what? We need to ratify that. We need to ratify that. Then you'll change everything else. There's laws. Anyway, I don't know. No, no, I'm trying to take it. But there's laws that have ratified it. There's things that can be done. But the key is that we have to make sure, and I think somebody said it earlier, we have to make sure that people are living by the law. You know, the problem is we have laws. And we have those living by the laws and those who are. You're right, but when the law is designed towards a group of people, basically, this is my question. Amendment is this is my question, though, right? It's, it's true. Uh, a, person dope, a person that sells dope, a person that sells dope, a person that sells dope you feel like a person that provides the service and the person that uses it more. Say what now? A person that sells dope, do you penalize the person that's using it more or the person that provides the service of it more? We have to understand that because all that person is doing really is providing service. He ain't making them smoke. But he ain't what, saying smoke by dope. Well, you, you said that earlier. It's called the sentencing disparity. 
Yeah. You know, but, but that's what we address. That has nothing to do with yeah, the law. No, 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 no. I can't have something to do with the law. It is connected. He does. No, no, because no, that law is designed towards me to make me a criminal. No, no, no. It's your choice. It's your choice. But if you're in a perverse environment. No, because guess what? Do we excuse the law? Excuse the police? We don't choose. Man, I don't know what you mean. But the law is the design to make us the sin disparities come from folk that have been able to find loopholes in the law. You know, that's what that comes down because if, if I turn around and if I, just like we know there's a discrepancy and a disparity for somebody using a method, you know, meth, and somebody using crack cocaine, we know there's a disparity in sentence for somebody having power cocaine and crack cocaine. So that's disparity within the sentencing. But the law, so it's actually the same, but the point is you have individuals that are implementing the law differently because of that mindset that we are they are conditioned in. Just like we are conditioned in a certain mindset. But I don't want to get away because I know Tina, Sister Tina wants to focus in on doing solutions and we can get in there because I want to bring y'all to the council to so bring all that down. I want the solution, but before you find a solution, you have to find a problem. And the problem is that it still says in the 13th Amendment that you're slaves. You commit a crime. If I commit a crime, I should be a slave. You, she could be a slave. I should be a slave. He could be a slave. Do I have a right to be a slave? Is you God? Can I add one last thing before I go to my imagination? I would just like to leave you all with this thought, and I would encourage you to read. Frederick Douglass says that there is no struggle, mm -hmm. there is no progress. Yes. Yes. But, but let me share this with you. The, the Again, the title is There is No Struggle, There is No Progress by Frederick Douglass. That is the ultimate reason. Every, I love Westerns. And every Saturday I watch white folks brutalize white folks because there are no black folks in those Westerns. And ultimately they resolve it through strength. When I take out a dollar bill, I see a man who basically said that if I don't stand up and take my rights, it's not like King George is going to give them to me. Mm. <laughs> so, when the Klan was formed in Iowa, there weren't enough black folks for them to focus on, so they went after the Irish and Catholics until they fought back. So, the, 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 the reason why, and, and that's why Frederick Douglass said, Find out just what a people will tolerate, and that's the limit of a tyrant. So it is not your color that ultimately is the reason why you continue to be oppressed. It is your weakness, it is your impotence, it is your lack of unity, focus, and discipline. And until those things are, are exist, then you will continue to be oppressed and brutalized. And having traveled 99 counties in this state, how many folks have traveled 99 counties in Iowa in the world? There's not. There's kind of hard, hard to do when you don't drive. <laughs> but you know what exists in a lot of counties? Poverty, exploitation, and the brutalization yep. of folks. Because they are not strong enough to cast off their oppression. So I'd just like to leave you all with that thought. You all have a wonderful evening. Not that belief outside that's, that's beginning to. To, to, to oscillate. What? Yeah. 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 Now, to think yeah. back on what Jonathan Narcissus is saying, talking about that we are weak, not necessarily that you are a weak individual, but it goes back to what your brother is saying. It's talking about organization. If you go back to the Ku Klux Klan, and you look at the Ku Klux Klan, the Ku Klux Klan is evolving every day. The reason the Ku Klux Klan wear sheets over their heads is because they don't want you to know who they are. Because the Ku Klux Klan is your neighbor, he's your school teacher, he's your representative, he's your judge, and he's almighty, so to speak. He has his hand in everything in which we do. So in essence of what we're talking about, all the stuff we're talking about to be strong and better, we have to implement it with a plan, as well as where you start at. We're starting right here in this town hall meeting, and then it goes from your community, and as it goes from your community, then it goes to your legislature. It's like a trickling effect, because if you don't come together and have strength, it's easy to divide you, all right, if we're not one, all right, and that's where it comes from. 
And so if that's what he said, like I hear him say, I just want him to clarify, when he says we are we, he's not talking about you in this room. And I like to say one thing. We all need to put our faith back in Jehovah and our works back in Him because that's the only solution. And His kingdom is the only kingdom that has not failed. And He has said that man cannot rule himself as we can see with these issues here today. So we need to go back on to our Creator because He built us and all this came from was uh, Satan questioning Jehovah's sovereignty to show us how beautiful of a person we are. Okay, I agree. I think that God is in charge of all of this. I will say this, we didn't get to, we did have some solutions, we did have some suggestions to get some things started, but I think we're going to have to have another meeting because people are tired and I see people are standing up like they want to leave. Well, I'm ready to so, stay until midnight. Well, I think that next time, <laughs> I hope that you all go out into the, so, into the community and raise one. Can we meet at Friday? Can we meet at the same time? Can we meet at 6 o'clock? I'll switch up 5.30. Can we, can we meet at 6? The event page said that tomorrow. Is there anything going on tomorrow? At 1 o'clock. Tomorrow at 1 o'clock, there at the is Capitol. a uh, million mass march at the Capitol on the west side, being sponsored by Liberals on the Edge. Myself, Mikhail, and Jonathan will be speaking at that event. I'll be representing Iowa Citizens for Justice. At 1 o'clock, I would love for you all to come out. Um, and they're going to be... Kaylin. Um, Hi, Kaylin. Yeah. I'm trying to you know, yeah. yeah. like I appreciate it. But um, I will be emailing all of you. We have some things that we do have planned, but we just we got too much side action and stuff going on. So, um, so Lashay? Lashay? Did you say Lesha? I promise you, we'll keep going. Did you? Were you at the protest? We emailed everybody that went to the protest. You will be on, Kaya keeps our email, so you will be on our email list. We also have a Facebook page, Iowa Citizens for Justice, where we post all of our events and stuff. So um, if you get on there, you can keep up with us too. But we will put you on the email list. You will be on our email list. Thank so you very much. I'm going to say we're going to be here next Friday at 6 o'clock. If you can come out tomorrow at 1 o'clock, I believe it's going to be open mic. So if you have more that you want to say, um, come out on behalf of Iowa Citizens for Justice. I appreciate all of you coming out and especially what you shared. And um, hopefully you'll come back so we can actually talk about how we can, what we're going to focus on and how we're systematically going to attack certain things. That's what the goal was tonight, but we just don't have enough time. So... We thank you all for coming out. Thank you. I still have some viewers on. Do you want to uh, describe your organization, what you do for... Well, I don't have my own organization. No, I mean, um, but the one that you work I for. Work for Children and Families of Iowa. Okay. Um, I work with um, trauma-informed teenage girls. Oh, good. So, uh, I'm not qualified for that. <laughs> it's all right. I'm a little young. <laughs> but, but you know, it doesn't really matter yes. about your age because yeah. trauma is all, yeah. all, all, all of us. Yeah. You know, there's, we all have undergone some type of trauma at some point in our life. Yes, yeah, but I happen to work with younger people. Yeah, but, but I think you will be a very good asset, especially with people like Lachey who went through what she did. And, uh, you know, I have had uh, many, many years ago, one of my sisters was uh, abducted and, uh, and sexually assaulted. And she did not have that resource we have lots of resources there. in our community for yeah. women. That but this was many, are, many are years gone, ago. Like some type of that, abuse or trauma. Or, yeah, that it happened to her. But uh, she has moved past that. So she's she's done. Yeah, she had to face it on her own, but she knew that she had us. So uh, we were her support for that. Yep. Well, uh, I will be there tomorrow. Are you uh, looking, is there going to be a particular theme for uh, tomorrow's uh, rally? Bring an Aaron Garner sign. Okay, I do have some. I knocked out a few. Awesome. 
And I still have that banner, that blue one. So I'll bring all those. And I will be there. Now my uh, stream had to shut down early because although I was plugged into my power pack and charging, it's that I guess I was down too low on my phone, plus it was getting hot, so I just went ahead and changed the battery. And, uh, and so tomorrow, 1 o'clock Central Time, I will go live from the Iowa State Capitol for a rally. There will be several speakers, and uh, this will be a rally not only about uh, Eric Gardner, but uh, all victims of police brutality and abuse and you know as they say in some of the chants uh, in other protests the whole damn system is guilty as hell and I don't cuss much but uh, that particular phrase says it all in my opinion and in the opinion of all these people here so so, so again uh, please check out my donation links at the bottom below my uh, the video view window if you're watching on Ustream. And uh, again, I want to thank any uh, Restream channels who picked this up and uh, carried it, with whatever you are. So thanks for doing that. And again, tomorrow, 1 o'clock Central, it's 2 o'clock Eastern, Iowa State Capitol. That's when I'll be back on the air. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the stream.